Welcome back, ladies and gents. Uh, I started playing Dead by Daylight in September of 2017. Now, I did take a year off or more for a break because I needed it. But I have never made a video like this before because I've never seen a killer like this before. Uh, if you don't know, the new PTB is out right now on PC with a new killer, survivor, and a map. Now, the killer is called The Knight. And it's based off the For Honor game. I don't know if you played it or not. I have not. But I've seen videos on it. I know pretty much what it's about. The killer's power, he can summon guards. He can summon three different guards. And they do different things. One is called the Carnifex. One is called the Assassin. And the other is called the Jailer. They do different things to help him, you know, catch survivors and help win the game. Now, the guards... What's scary about the power is he can have guards go to different places on the map. And what it does is he hits the ability button and they can go wherever he tells them to, but it's like the spirits phase. You can't see survivors, but they just go to where you tell him to go. And they can kick gens, they can kick pallets, they can block areas, they can try to find survivors for you and some can even attack survivors it's pretty scary like if you're in a loop say you got kill shack everybody knows how much a pain kill shack can be sometimes you can have your guard basically block one entrance of kill shack and go around to the other side so they have to decide if they want to get hit by you or get hit by the guard or you run away from Kill Shack. It basically neutralizes loops. Pretty much. But as scary as his ability is. His perks are even scarier. The first perk is called Nowhere to Hide. And all that does is when you kick a gen. You can see any survivor within 24 meters. For 3 seconds I think. Let me look real quick. 3, 4, or 5 seconds. That's pretty freaking good. So, if you kick a gen, you just look around and see if you see anybody. The only counters I can think for that as a survivor is if you see they're about to kick a gen, or you think they're going to, you can jump into a locker, because I don't think you can see inside lockers. The problem is, if you combine that with Iron Maiden, then when you come out, you're exposed for 30 seconds. So, that may not work. The only other option I can think of is Distortion. The only problem with that is you can have three tokens to start with. Granted, you can build more up, but it, you start with three base tokens. Here's the kicker about this perk. There's no cooldown. You know, a perk like Darkness Revealed, Judge's perk. You open a locker, you can see, you know, survivors that are near lockers. But there's a cooldown for 30 seconds, and you have to be around the locker to see them. This, there's no cooldown, there's no restriction. Within 24 meters, you can see anybody. That's pretty ridiculous. There should at least be a cooldown of 30 seconds on it. That's just my opinion. Uh, the next one is a hex perk, let me check it, called Face the Darkness. When you hit a survivor, one of the dull totems will become a hex totem. And all those survivors that are outside your terror radius will scream intermittently. There's no timetable for it. You just scream sometimes. So if you're working on a gen or you're trying, let's say you find a hex totem. And you're trying to cleanse a totem. Or you're healing yourself or somebody else and they have sloppy butcher. And you scream, it resets. Like, if you're working on a gen, you're using hyper focus, you know, you gotta build up your great skill checks, stacks up, and everything. You scream, well, it resets. It's kind of like Doctor's ability, except with Doctor, you just have to snap out of it, and then things, you know, go back to normal, and you just play the game. This, you just scream whenever, if you're outside the terror radius. That's gonna be pretty tough. And not as tough as his last perk. It's called Hubris. 
Basically, anytime you get stunned, the survivor who stunned you is exposed for 20 seconds. It does have a cooldown, but look at it this way. If they're running Hubris, uh, Enduring, and Spear Fury, and their Spear Fury is up and you stun them with a pallet, you're screwed. Unless you go to 316 or something. Which, I'm not. <laughs> I'm okay, but I'm not good. So, if their Spear of Fury is up, you stun with a pallet, they're stunned for, what, a half second with Enduring? Maybe a second? And then you're exposed for 20 seconds. So, best of luck. Those are the killer uh, ability and perks. The survivor perks are pretty decent. Uh, let me scroll down. One is called, I think it's Potential Energy. Yes. This is an interesting perk. What it is, you start working on a gen for a few seconds. You can hit the ability button. And you can keep working on the gen. But it doesn't make any progress on the gen. What it does is it will bank your progress. And you can use it later. So for every one and a half seconds you work on a gen, you get one second that you bank up to 20 seconds. So a generator takes 90 seconds to do, you know, without a toolbox or help or anything like that. Just general, you know, good skill checks and everything is 20 is 90 seconds. Where I can see this working is if you have like a three gen at the end and say you're halfway done with the gen or whatever. And the killer is kind of patrolling, but not too hard. You can work on a different gen and build it up, build up your, your bank. And you go back to the gen that's halfway done. And you can get it done faster. Where I can see this working even better is if you have fast track. If you have, say, 15 tokens of fast track plus 20 seconds of bank for your potential energy... And you can get that gen done pretty quick. But otherwise, eh, I'm not a big fan of it. I probably won't use that much. Maybe, you know, screw around the first couple times with that perk just to try it out. But I probably won't use it very much. Uh, the next one is called Fogwise. And I like this perk. Basically, what all it is is you hit a great skill check. You can see the killer's aura for six seconds. That's pretty good. I mean, alert, the killer has to break a pallet or a gen or whatever, and you can see the killer for a few seconds. This one, you just hit a great skill check, and that's it. So if you're using a hyper-focus build with, what's Taps perk? Not Detective Hunch. Starts with an S, I think. Anyways, it makes great or good skill checks and then great skill checks. So this could work pretty well. I like it. Uh, his last perk is called Quick Gambit. All that does is when you're being chased, uh, any teammate who's working on a gen gets an 8% speed boost to repair. That's pretty good. Uh, say you're using uh, Bond and you can see where your teammates are and they're working on gens within 24 meters, which is, like I said, a pretty good... Uh, radius they get eight percent speed boost to the repair and if you're working with teammates or you know you got solo teammates that are working on gens in like close to the same area within 24 meters if you're in chase they both get an eight percent skill or uh, repair speed boost that's pretty good i'm a teammate oriented player okay i like help my teammates get the gens done and get out so this perk is pretty freaking good i like it Fogwise and quick gambit i like potential energy and eh, i'm kind of man now the map i call it the mars medieval map basically if somebody took a medieval map and put it on the planet mars that's what it looked like because it's red and i mean really red Kind of hard to see scratch marks and blood a little bit. So it's kind of survivor side, except for the fact that there's not a great 
lot of looping areas, but the color kind of helps with that. But anyways, uh, I just thought I'd give my quick synopsis of that, what I think about the killer and the perks and everything. Uh, if you want to talk about it, just comment below and I'll talk with you. That's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Well, bye.